Hey, it's Matt for a third time today. I'm sitting at home bored and I'm making videos and I made a couple already today. Uh, contest entry for Rockboy 680's 2000 subscribers contest and I did Sgt. Pepper. I'm doing, uh, had been doing the Beatles albums in order of release and ranking the songs in my order of preference on said albums and so I'd been quite a while since I'd uh, left off at Revolver, I don't know, a couple of months or more ago and so I picked up with Sgt. Pepper today, did that one, that's up, and so we move on to the next album in order, which is a uh, Magical Mystery Tour, and uh, I've got this partly in the uh, plastic bag here because it's a uh, pain in the ass to get it back in there, so uh, you know what the album looks like anyway, it's got a book inside of it and all sorts of cool pictures and whatnot. Um, don't know that I'll do the wide album today because I don't know that I want to sit down and figure that all out with the all the songs on there. But anyway, so Magical Mystery Tour, their second release in 1967, another number one. Failed to say in the first video that Sgt. Pepper also hit number one, as if you didn't already know that. Uh, this was um, sort of an album, it's sort of not an album because it's a soundtrack to their third film, Magical Mystery Tour. And in England, it was released as a double EP set. Used to have that, no longer do. I wish I had held on to that. In America, we didn't really do EPs, even though there were a few Beatle EPs. They didn't, uh, uh, the EP was not that popular in America for some reason. I think it had to do with the economics of the two countries that, from what I've read in the 60s, the uh, youth of England didn't have as much disposable income as... American kids did, so they tended to buy singles, and I guess if you get an EP, you get extra songs, so that's extra value for your money. I don't know the EPs cost any more or less than a 45, and in America, we just consume, 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 so we bought everything, and that's sort of why the uh, hit singles were not on the albums, generally speaking, in England, but they were in America, and why America capital chopped albums up to make extra Beatle albums that didn't really exist, but uh, anyway... So in England, this was a double EP. Later on, it came out as a regular album like this, but in America, uh, EPs were out of the question, and so they made it into an album by taking several 45s that uh, were not in the Magical Mystery Tour movie, but several 45s that had been released in the year before, or same year, actually, and had not been on an album, and they stuck them on the backside, and voila, they have an album instead of two EPs. So, uh, and being that I grew up here, this is how I always knew this album. And so I always considered it an album proper, so I'm not going to just rank the songs on the Magical Mystery Tour soundtrack. I'm just going to rank the album as a whole, all of the songs. This is the album for me that started it all, changed my life. I've told that story a million times. You can look back on some of the other videos to see this was the first Beatle album that I really tuned into and became a Beatles fan for life back when I was all of eight or nine years old. And anyway, let's get to the rankings. There are 11 songs on here. As always, I'm going from number 11 to number one. And uh, as always, the rankings may change if you ask me again next week or two years from now. So, number 11, and uh, again, Another, as always, with the Beatles albums, I love the Beatles, so there's very few Beatles songs that I just don't like or don't care for, very few of them, so even though on this album there's a couple that are close, so we'll go with number 11 is uh, Instrumental Flying, which is uh, credited to all four of the Beatles. It's kind of boring, but it's also kind of good, it's... I don't remember ever really being in the mood to hear the thing, even though when I play the album, I let it play through, and it's enjoyable enough for what it is. I think back in the FM radio days, early days of FM radio, it used to be a between-song radio DJ chatter song background music. Uh, it's okay. It, it, I guess once in a great while, it's maybe even a little better than okay, but... It's just sort of there. It's sort of nice and sort of kind of dull. So that's number 11. Number 10 is uh, Blue Jay Way, George Harrison song. Uh, the only George Harrison song on here, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's kind of a dreary song, too. 
Uh, he wrote this when he was in California in the hills of Hollywood, I think, if I remember my Beatle history correctly. Not a terrible song, but eh, it's just okay. Uh, and again, one that I'm not really ever in the mood to go out of my way to listen to. And generally speaking, I love George's contributions to the Beatles. Uh, this is not one of my favorite of his, though, but it's okay. And from here on out, it gets ridiculous because every song left on here I totally love. I would give a 10 to all of these. And, uh, you know, if you ask me an hour from now, my rankings might be different. So it, it's almost not really worth going through. And it's hard to uh, even find the milliliter of degree that separates these tracks in my fondness for them to even make a ranking so I could probably take these uh, rankings and these numbers and cut them up into separate pieces and throw them in the air and that would work just as well as what I've got written down so but number nine hello goodbye which I love uh, the vocal just the the whole uh, production the punch to it just the why, 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 and all of that. I mean, it's a great song, so it goes number nine right now, but it could just as easily be number two or five or one or whatever. So number eight, Magical Mystery Tour, the title track, which is uh, was the song that just blew the roof off my head when I was a little eight-year-old kid, and first time I really tuned into and paid attention to the Beatles and uh, changed everything. It got me into record collecting and my love of music and Beatles and then other bands that followed and here I am today a hundred years later talking to you on this newfangled contraption called the the YouTube um, which I never would have imagined such a thing back in 1973 yeah uh, it's great uh, I think this is sort of Paul trying to do um, revisit the well of the Sgt. Pepper title track which I think is a little bit better song than Magical Mystery Tour, the song. But I love the fade. I love the uh, ending of the song, the da -da 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 the fade out, and uh, it's a great song. And I think this was considered as a single in America anyway at one point, but for some reason it was never. Uh, they never followed through with it. Uh, capital that is not the Beatles. Um, yeah. So number seven, your mother should know. Some people call that Paul's granny music. I always loved it. I think it's got a nice, uh, cool air to it, a nice little uh, little um, solid uh, just uh, punch to it. And uh, this thing's a really cool song. And uh, great song, great song. Number six, All You Need Is Love. Uh, 45, of course, this wasn't in the movie. I love it when they do the... Uh, re reprise of She Loves You, Love It, the uh, French nat national anthem that opens the songs, uh, John's uh, kind of uh, super cool, bored, chewing gum, could care less, here I am, I'm great, and you know it, and I know it, vocal. Uh, uh, just really cool. And, of course, if you've ever seen, it was a, a TV show that they did, which was a worldwide broadcast when they debuted this song and did it live. And uh, you'll notice that the Rolling Stones are sitting at the feet of the Beatles, and the Beatles never would have done that. Not that I don't like the Rolling Stones, but we'll move along. Number five, Walrus. John Lennon at his uh, psychedelic best and literary best, uh, you know, shades of, of uh, um, I just went blank, Lear and, 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 uh, and uh, Alice in Wonderland and psychedelic, great music, uh, great song, what can you say about I Am the Walrus, uh, great imagery. Number four, Fool on the Hill. One of my favorite McCartney vocals. Just a really great song. Love the clip in the movie The Magical Mystery Tour where he's uh, singing that. He went, uh, took the day off. He's the only one in that clip and he went across the uh, English Channel to France and that's him running around in France somewhere in some fields and hills and and just a great little clip of that movie which was uh, not critically loved when it came out didn't come out in America really, it just came out in England, but uh, not as good as A Hard Day's Night or Help, but it's uh, 
it's a weird thing, but it's uh, through the years it's kind of grown in stature and of course a uh, big influence on what became MTV years later but uh, so what was I talking about uh, I was talking about Fool on the Hill and what a great song it is and indeed it is number three baby you're a rich man it just 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 uh, drives along and and, and uh, they're yelling and singing and having fun and having a ball and just love that song and the number Last two, you can already guess from what's left. The 1967 single, I always wondered what would have, uh, had they held on to that and put it on Sgt. Pepper, would have been interesting. Uh, Penny Lane, just, uh, I, I mean, what can you say? It, it's out of a scale of 1 to 10, these two songs are 100, you know. Uh, Fish and Finger Pie, that's uh, Paul being, being uh, dirty, little dirty there. And... Uh, Strawberry Fields Forever is number one, no surprise. So, great album. 1967. Uh, we'll get to the wide album at some point. And, um, yeah.